Okay, this is the first of several videos that I'm going to make to um, piece together the presentation I've been giving to Major League teams on <clears throat> some baseball aerodynamics work that we've been doing at Utah State on something we call seam shifted wakes, or another way to put it, using baseball seams to create break on a pitch. So I start off by saying that my qualifications for talking about this have nothing to do with uh, my mechanics. I'm I'm not a pitcher. I'm not a pitcher. I am uh, not here to teach mechanics. I'm a mechanical engineering professor um, living in Utah, um, but um, I, we've discovered new ways to make the baseball move that have nothing to do with Magnus effect. And uh, and in order to explain them to you, I'm going to have to teach you a little bit of aerodynamics, and I promise it won't hurt a bit. Um, I, I, I hope I've made this easy to digest. So let's start by talking about pressure. And a, a lot of this talk is about pressure because I think that that's, uh, that's where it's at on baseballs. People tend to focus on other things, but this is where I want the focus to be. So, uh, if, and, and most people don't have a very good int intuitive feel for it, even though it's all around us. So if you're driving down the road and you open your car door, you'll have high pressure on the outside of that door and low pressure on the inside. That's going to cause that door to move towards you because of that pressure difference across the door. Maybe more relevant to a baseball, let's think about uh, the front, a, a semi-truck. This is a, a model of a semi-truck in a laboratory and uh, with smoke flowing over the top of it. Um, if you were to have no windshield and you could put your face right out the front of the, the truck like that, what you would feel is pressure on your face. The, the pressure at this point where the velocity comes to the same as the front of the truck, we call that stagnation pressure, and it's very high. The pressure then goes down as you go around the truck and it stays kind of about the same as the, the atmosphere as you run along the top of it. Then you'll have low pressure in the wake. Now on a truck, the wake is pretty simple because this truck is long and square and the wake is about as the same size as the truck. Baseballs being round have a more complicated wake and uh, they can be smaller than the ball. And I'll talk about that in just a second. But if you have high pressure in the front, if you could stick your face here, on the top of the truck, you wouldn't feel much at all. You might feel the wind going by, but there wouldn't be any pressure on your face because this pressure is about the same as it is out here. So, um, but we're talking about balls. Um, and uh, before we talk about baseballs, let's talk about something that's very easy to understand, in my opinion. That's the flow around a golf ball. Golf balls are, are very well behaved. <clears throat> They're what I call homogeneous. They're the same everywhere. Um, these dimples make them that way. The dimples also cause the wake of the ball to be small. And I'll talk about these colors later on, but for now, just uh, figure that they're marking where the wake of the ball is. And you can see the wake of the ball is much smaller than the ball itself. This ball is not, not spinning, it's moving to the left at about 30 meters a second. And I've marked two important points here. These are the points where the wake starts to form on the two sides of the ball. And uh, that's what I want you to focus on in all the pictures I'm going to show like this. If we take that same ball at the same speed and we spin it now, it'll look like this. And so you, you should notice that the wake is tilted down. The reason the wake is tilted down is that this blue arrow has moved backward and the red arrow has moved forward. So the, the locations where the flow separates has changed. The pressure is high at the front of the ball. It's changing as we go around the back of the ball. I'll explain in a minute that the pressure everywhere in this wake region is the same. So the net result of this is that since these the separation happened at different locations on the front and the top and bottom of the ball, that means there's a pressure difference across the ball and it's being pushed upward. Just like your car door is being pushed into you when you open it up, that's because there's pressure on the front is different than it is on the back. So the takeaway here is that if we can break the symmetry of the wake, if we can make it tilt one way or the other, if we can make those two separation points move to different locations on the ball, then we can get a sideways force. Magnus is the traditional way that this has been done in almost every single sport that involves a ball. Uh, it's been done for 120 years on baseball pitches and we understand it really well. Um, I'm going to show you that we can do it with seams too and that's exciting because that allows us to add additional break to a baseball pitch that you can't do with Magnus. Uh, Magnus does saturate, you know, above 3000 RPM you can't get much more force from Magnus. Uh, and, and this is uh, what I'm going to show you is totally on top of that. Uh, the only trick uh, is to keep the effect on one side of the ball and not on the other most of the time. And if you're sitting there scratching your head wondering why this hasn't been brought up before, this is really why. It's easy to make the seams change the wake of the ball, but it's hard to make it happen in a way that averages out to a force because as the ball spins around, 
Most of the time, the seams are going to cause the opposite force half a rotation later, and that averages to nothing. Uh, so, what do the seams do to the separation? This is, and this is an example of what I was just saying. This is some very old data that we took almost a year and a half ago. Um, and this is a high school baseball. But uh, the ball is spinning, and we're taking a snapshot of it as it goes by, and we're starting the ball in different orientations so that we can put together this full rotation. And what I noticed when I first looked at this was that the separation point, which we've shown with this blue dot here, moves around as a result of the seams. When the seams come by, it, tends, it seems to drag it along with it a little bit. Uh, that was the first thing we noticed. This is a two-seam orientation, and every time the ball goes around, you see those two points shift substantially. If I put it in a four-seam orientation, the same thing's happening just more rapidly because there's four distinct seams coming along. With a two-seam, it's almost like there's one pair of seams that comes around every rotation. So <clears throat> it's substantially moving the wake around, but by the time you do a full rotation, it doesn't amount to anything. So uh, th this is happening to any baseball pitch that you see, um, but it's not really changing the direction of motion of the pitch at all. Um, so continuing with the aerodynamics, <clears throat> talking about pressure, <clears throat> as these blobs appro approach the front of the ball, their pressure is going to go up, as I mentioned earlier. As they go around the ball, pressure begins to go down, and when it gets past the middle and starts to go towards the back, pressure starts going up again. If this blob can make it all the way to the back of the ball here, the pressure would be about the same as it is on the front, but it doesn't. It separates up here, which means the pressure stops changing. The pressure on the entire wake area of the ball is the same. So um, <clears throat> that means the pressure here is lower than it is on the front of the ball, and that's what causes drag on baseballs. Um, uh, people tend to think, talk about skin friction. Skin friction has almost nothing to do with the drag on a baseball. It's there, but it's small compared to the fact that you have this big pressure force across the ball. Okay, so that's a ball that's set up in a symmetric orientation. If I tilt the ball relative to the oncoming flow or the direction that the ball is moving, now I can see, whoops, now I can see that uh, as these two blobs move around, the separation points on the top and the bottom are different. The separation on the bottom is being caused by this seam here. Since that happened earlier than it did on the top, that means the pressure uh, is different between the top and the bottom. The wake tilts downward as a result of that, and uh, that's just a that's a symptom. That's not a, that doesn't cause anything in itself. It's just a uh, it's reflecting the fact that the pressure is different on the top and the bottom. And when the wake is tilted down, we know there's a force pushing up on the ball. So the trick is going to be to find a way to make this happen in a steady fashion, and that's what most of the rest of the talk is about. Uh, we call that a seam shifted wake. My student Andrew Smith, who um, coined that term, claims trademark on it. So if you'd like, I can send you his address and you can send him a check if you'd like to use that term. Uh, between you and me, I don't think he's filed that paperwork yet.